Omaha's news leader, chronicling the stories and people making a difference in our community. This is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. Somebody knows, somebody has information and they're either scared or just not willing to get involved. The pain of losing a loved one, a pain multiplied when the killer is never caught. Well, that's what we're addressing today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rob McCartney. September is Cold Case Awareness Month, and today on Chronicle, we're taking a look at some of the 360 cold cases currently open in Omaha. And I'm talking with a homicide lieutenant on a mission to crack these cases. First, the mystery of who killed Andrea Georgeson. We're coming up on four years since the night when the Omaha woman was gunned down in cold blood. I first showed you Andrea and surveillance images of the man suspected of killing her when the Crime Stoppers reward for information about him was raised to $25,000. Her family and the lead detective hopeful that that cash is enough to get someone to come forward. She's fabulous. <laughs> she has a big heart. And Aaliyah Rogers is talking about her big sister, Andrea Georgeson. Loved everyone and was accepting of everyone. A woman who loved her family. She loved music and reading. A woman who loved life, but her life ended tragically and violently. This was the scene in the pre-dawn hours of August 23rd, 2019. Andrea had been sitting in her car on a break outside her job at 108th and Mill Valley when someone came up to her. And our belief is attempted to rob her. Speaking with family members, uh, she wasn't the type of person that would just give up. Um, and unfortunately, uh, she was shot and she died. The question now is, who did it? Well, for the first time, we can show you still images from surveillance video that morning. Take a close look. It appears to be a man in a dark coat with patches on the chest. There were a number of armed robberies around that time frame, and now police tell me they think he might be this guy. This suspect used a gun to rob a Speedy Mart on Grover and a quick shop on Galvin in Bellevue about a week after the murder. Detective Hahn said he noticed how similar the man's clothing and profile are to the killer, specifically the jacket and the shoes. We do believe that this individual has committed other crimes in the Omaha metro area, uh, potentially robberies. Um, we also believe that this individual has probably shared this information with others. Well, police need that information, and so does the family. Someone randomly shot another person in the head for seemingly no reason at all. That should scare everyone. It scares Andrea's family, and the fact that no one's been caught yet hurts them even more. They just want to be able to let her lie in peace. Like, we can say goodbye to her, but we can't. It's hard to say goodbye and close that door when you don't know what happened and why it happened. All right, take another look at him. Know who this is? Use one of these tip lines. If he's caught and charged, you could get that money without anyone knowing who you are. $25,000. Well, cold cases like those really take a toll, obviously, on families, but they can also take a toll on the officers who are investigating him. Joining us now is Lieutenant Nick Andrews from the Omaha Police Department. And Nick, thanks for being here today. Thank you. First off, just, I mean, this is kind of basic, but just tell us what makes a case cold. Well, the case is originally assigned to an active case detective, mm -hmm. and that case detective will work that case until all leads are exhausted. Once the leads are exhausted, we would consider that, cold, uh, that case cold at that time. Sometimes that's a year, sometimes that's two or three years. Um, it, ju it just kind of depends on what type mm -hmm. of information is coming in to the department and to the detectives. Gotcha. And what kind of cases can go cold? Are, are you talking just murders or can any case technically go cold? Well, pr obviously we work with homicides right. uh, in my unit and homicides are generally what the cold case unit works on, yes. Um, mm -hmm. There are other cases, um, sexual assault cases that detectives in the uh, special victims unit work for uh, you know, long periods of time, but yes, the, the cold case unit uh, looks at homicide cases. And how many uh, detectives are on these cases? Currently, we have two full-time detectives. There's one sergeant and one uh, officer. And then we have also brought in, with a uh, cold case grant we're working on, two part-time detectives. Is that enough? 
it's not. Uh, we'd like to have uh, you know more detectives, but uh, we do a good job with what we have. Right. I mean, I've been over there in the area. It, it's packed with with papers and information. It just seems like you guys are always working on the case. Yeah. Right now, we have over 350 cold cases mm -hmm. uh, in the unit, um, and detectives shuffle through those those cases. Uh, they'll take a take a book down, look at a case that hasn't been looked at in a while, uh, review that. Uh, both both uh, sergeant and detective will kind of do peer reviews and have one of them look at it. Uh, and and if they're not seeing anything or nothing's nothing's sticking out, nothing's new, they'll put that aside and pick up another one. Um, and and some cases have more information than others. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunately the the nature of the of the uh, investigation. Some sometimes you uh, have people getting fresh eyes on it, right? I mean, a different look at it. It's not the same person looking at the same information all the time. Absolutely. That's uh, that's key to some of the right. cases. Um, walk me through a typical investigation, if you could. I mean, so uh, a murder happens and time goes by. What, what do you do? So the, the detectives, again, uh, we'll look at all that evidence. We'll send evidence mm -hmm. off for testing, uh, whether that's you know, physical evidence, digital evidence, um, and interviews of witnesses, potential suspects, loved ones. And uh, after that's done, if, if nothing is moved on the case, like I said, after a certain amount of time and detectives feel that we're not getting anywhere on this, then we'll put it over to cold case. And those cold case, uh, the sergeant mm -hmm. and officer will look at that and again they'll look at it from different angles and see right. if something was missed along the line if maybe there was more an, an interview that that needed some more questions because we learned something down the line so but, but you're in touch with the families though right I mean did, did they play a part in the investigation at all absolutely uh, so unfortunately that when a homicide does occur it's one of the first things that detectives and sergeants are tasked to do with that's go make contact with the next of kin, uh, loved ones, family members. And from that day on, we are in contact with those family members. Mm -hmm. we're, we're updating them with the information that we can. Um, if arrests are made, they're the first person we contact mm -hmm. is, the, is the family members and next of kin of the deceased. How hard is it dealing with them? Because they want answers. They want answers right away. I mean, they want this no, to never have happened. But since this has happened, they want answers right away. They want you to give them answers. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult. Um, you know, the detectives are do a great job of that. They understand, um, and they are they're having to deal with people who are at their lowest point in life. So uh, they're skilled. They're they're very good at what they do, and um, they don't get enough praise for right. for what they do. Right. I mean, it, it's got to take a toll on them, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, how can the public help you clear these cases? Uh, one of the main things is Crime Stoppers. You know, if they don't want to come forward uh, publicly uh, because of fear of whatever, they can anonymously report that on Crime Stoppers. Mm -hmm. um, if they change their mind uh, down the road and they see uh, a you know, case or hear something about a case, then they can contact the police department anytime. Um, and that's, that's simple. They can do it through the website. They can do it through telephone. And detectives are always there to answer that phone and reach out and obtain their information. Think you'll ever clear them all? That's the, the impossible task, right? It is the impossible task. We'd love to. We'd love to clear all the cases. Great. Nick, appreciate you coming in today. Thanks. Thank you. And a little bit more on that cold case grant that Nick mentioned. It's $500,000, and the Omaha City Council unanimously approved the federal funding back in May. The grant allows UNMC to test DNA samples using new technology like genetic mapping. We have over 200 unknown profiles that are over at the DNA lab that this money will help us and allow us to do retesting so that we're able to um, hopefully get a full profile and we're able to identify suspects. Yeah, Sergeant Spencer saying besides the two additional part-time detectives, the grant also pays for a prosecutor when they crack a case. The grant runs through 2025. All right, still to come here on KATV News Watch 7's Chronicle, helping grieving families, plus details on more cold cases, including the execution-style murders of Jamila Heseltine and Carl Reed nearly 12 years ago, and the journey that led their family members to help establish Cold Case Awareness Month.